Hello, my fellow chatterers and book lovers, and magical readathon followers, and anyone else who's popped in because you're curious about what this is or you have got a bit lost. I'm Chatty, and welcome to my channel, Chatty the Red Chatter, where I'm going to be chatting very madly to you about the magical readathon and what my possible TBR is going to be for the spring equinox. If you do not know what the magical readathon is, I have put all the descriptions and links to the videos from G from Book Roast in the description box so you will be able to find those out and go and have a little look-see. Um, so firstly, <laughs> I, I have got dodgy glasses. They are very slanty on my nose and that I'm doing this to kind of hold them on and it's very off-putting so I might just have a blurry screen and just take them off because it's, it's very distracting. I probably will change my mind a bit about this. So already we've started with chaos. Hello everybody, I'm so pleased you're here. Um, and if you are new to the channel, on my long videos, I do one shot, it is a continuous take, I don't do editing. So here's my little teacupy gimmick, one shot now editing. Cheers everyone, clink, 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 clink. <sighs> so um, Magical Readathon in a nutshell is a magical university where the subjects are the prompts. Um, and you can kind of get as involved or as little involved as you like. You can make your own character. So my character, Piola Sirloip, is a very studious elf. And um, he is following the calling of Star Whisperer and also Scribe because he can't quite make up his mind. So we have uh, two different callings. And for each calling, there are five prompts. So I've got five for Star Whisperer and five for Scribe that I'll be looking at. But helpfully, they have an overlap. So two of the subjects they both study. So that means I technically only need to read eight books for me to pass the spring equinox. I might, I could, if I was sensible, focus more on Star Whisperer and then slightly on Scribe afterwards, but I'm probably not going to do that. Um, I am also going to be taking part in Trans Girl April as well. So I'm going to be wanting to get some trans books. Uh, books by trans authors into this TBR. So we're going to crack on straight away and um, for Star Whisperer my five subjects are Art of Illusion, Astronomy, Inscription, Law and Psionics and Divination. For Scribe my five subjects are um, Restoration, Law, Inscription, Elemental Studies and Spells and Incantations. So Inscription and Law I double up on. So for law, um, what we are studying this year has been interrupted. Uh, so there is going to be a side quest around law. Um, so for law, we just have to reread the legend of Deer that's to do with the side quest, which is an A4 um, piece about this legend that G has written. And so I will in the month of April reread that because I've already read it. Um, and that's law done, which is very, very helpful <laughs> because that means I can focus on other things. So there we go. Law is going to be nice and easy. Inscription, however, is going to be slightly more difficult. Inscription, we have to do practical typography. And for that, we write down three titles and fold it and then pick one. I'm going to come back to this. <laughs> I will be coming back to this because I'm going to see what books fit in other prompts before I decide what three books I'm going to put into that melting pot. Um, so then we have the art of illusion. And for that, the prompt is shadow play. Um, and so for that, we need to read a book with the word game or play in the title. Now, I was hoping to get hold of Gender Games by Juno Dawson, which is her memoir. Uh, Juno Dawson is a trans woman. But all the copies at my library are out on loan and are not going to be, I think they're not due back until like quite far into April. It's like another reservation. So that's great that so many people are reading Juno Dawson's um, memoir. Um, but it means I cannot pick it up for this prompt. So I've gone with a different one. So this book has been on my um, Storygraph TBR for a while. Um, and it is Game Changer by Neil Schusterman. Um, I have a feeling this is a dystopia. Um, yeah, possibly. Um, Sci-fi, anyway. Um, Neil Schusterman is most well known for writing The Ark of the Scythe, which I'm working on. I'm working on it. Um, but I do enjoy the writing. I've heard really good things about this book. 
So I am excited to read it. It wasn't on my plans uh, at this point in time, but I'm excited to read it. So I've got this copy out of the library, so that's going to work really well. So we've got one book set in place. The next prompt we have is um, astronomy. Okay, this is the fun one. So for this, we are studying Constellation 3, and we have to read a Zodiac recommendation book. So this I struggled with. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this. Um, so the idea behind it is there are a lot of booktube videos where they do Zodiac book recommendations. So recommendations for readers if this is your star sign. So I am a Gemini and hilariously, most of the booktubers that I pulled out <laughs> uh, to look at their Zodiac recommendation videos were also Gemini's and um, I, I have realized that this is this is very uh, perfect for me because one of the main things about a Gemini that everyone seemed to be coming back to was that Gemini's like to talk a lot um, so that definitely fits with my brand <laughs> um, but all the books they were recommending I will share with you so <laughs> Um, firstly, one of the books rec recommended, so the um, things about a Gemini is, as well as being very talkative, social, imaginative, um, needs to be kept um, engaged, I suppose, like a little bit flitty, so needing to kind of like um, lots of things happening to focus in on, um, can be a little bit like chaotic and scatty and can... Um, definitely kind of like over analyze and overthink things in terms of um, social like social situations so adapting themselves to fit into different types of social groups um, which I'm definitely aware I am someone that does that so I will like pick up on certain things and like change myself slightly to fit in with that social group um, that's definitely something I do or I do the opposite and make um, for example, if I'm with a lot of people who are very kind of like um, s very strong, like southern accents um, and sort of very kind of like well elocuted, more Queen's English accents, I will probably allow my Midlands accent to kind of come through a bit more. Um, so sometimes I go the opposite way. But yeah, definitely changeable. I, 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 I'm comfortable saying that. Um, so there's all the different things for Gemini's. Um, so one of the book recommendations was Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo because um, there is a lot, there's 12 different characters in here. So that's a lot of things to explore and talk about. Lots of like engagement happening. Um, it's kind of like sh lots of little kind of short stories, but you really get to know the character through them. And then all of these are linked and they're kind of linked to each other. And the final kind of section, so it's done in like four different sections where three characters are very closely linked together, but then there are some links to the other ones. But everyone kind of culminates at um, going to see this play at the end and it kind of brings all of the storylines and kind of character connections together. And like there are bigger storylines than others in that. Um, so there's a lot of kind of stuff to keep a Gemini engaged and there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So that was the reason for this one. And I completely agree. I love this book. This is one of my favorite books. I absolutely want to reread it at some point, just not right now. So can't read that one. Uh, another book that I think was kind of more literal uh, was The Vanishing Half by Brit, um, Brit Bennett, um, because we have twins in this one. So again, you have two um, very different situations, different characters. So, um, the story behind this one is has been inspired by Passing by Nella Larson, and it is um, two um, very light skinned uh, black girls that could pass for being white. One sister um, disappears, so one of the twin sisters disappears and um, is passing for white, and the other sister um, marries a very um, dark skin toned black man and has a daughter and returns home to her mother. And it's like the way their different lives kind of took them. And it looks at colorism, it looks at family, 
it looks at a kind of like where you come from and your roots and different things in there so that again there's a lot to talk about in this book and there's like two different choices so it's kind of like different opposite ends of the coin so I can understand again why this one would be recommended and again I really enjoyed this book <laughs> but I've read it and I'm not going to reread it the next one again going on kind of the two and the balance is Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and um, Terry Pratchett. So in this one, you have an unlikely friendship between the angel Azaphiel and the demon Crowley. And it's kind of how they are sort of working together on Earth and the apocalypse is going to be happening. So they're kind of like both like chatting through like how their different sides are, are going with this whole Armageddon thing. And that they sort of get involved with like not really wanting the, uh, the world to end and is there a way for them to prevent it. And it's kind of like how all of that kind of like comes into being and it's really, really funny. And you, again, you have these two different sides and there's a lot of stuff to talk about in this one. So definitely see the appeal. I, re I reread it last year and I'm not going to be doing another reread right now. So that one's not going to work. Um, slightly more out there so this or like just looking at it in a different way um, this recommendation is to do with um, one of the main um, characters in the story that they are uh, very much a Gemini in that they are um, very kind of adaptable to the situations um, they are very intelligent and talkative and um, so again, it gives you a lot to kind of like explore and talk about. And it was kind of for one of the protagonists in here, which is Kelsia from The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Again, I have read this book. I definitely plan to reread it, but I'm not at that point because that would be me starting another series. And that's not what I'm intending to do right now. So those are all great recommendations, but I've read all of them. So, and other recommendations were kind of more things like thrillers that are not really my vibe and only if I'm in a thriller mood would I be picking up a thriller and I'm not generally in a thriller mood. So I'm not just going to read a book that I'm probably not going to enjoy for the sake of fulfilling a prompt. So I decided to come up with my own. So bearing all that in mind, um, I have just a recommendation because I just think it's good to recommend this book. So if for Gemini's you're wanting a lot of stuff going on in the story and a lot to be thinking about to keep you engaged and to keep you involved and to, have to, to come up with theories and things to talk about and things to blow your mind and just to be constantly talking, 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 talking about this book, I present to you the epic fantasy, the first book in A Chorus of Dragons by Jen Lyons, The Ruin of Kings. Now, this is a Marmite book. It's not for everyone. It's got a very, um, it's got dual timelines going on it's got footnotes it's got lots of characters lots of plot but this is a really epic series and there's lots of pieces that need to be moved on the board for this book um but if you enjoy um a non-linear plot if you enjoy um getting to learn more about characters and world building and all of that stuff is your vibe I really recommend this book. This book will keep you talking. Uh, you will read it two or three times and still not completely know what's going on. And I am so hyped to be rereading this series at some point. It's going to happen again. Um, I, lo I love this series. love this series so much. So yes, this is a definitely a book that I would recommend to other Geminis. Okay, books that I could actually read. <laughs> so again, going with the on the lines of the two situation i have twin crowns by um catherine weber and catherine doyle oh one thing i forgot to mention about good omens that um the book tuba recommended was that it's written by two authors so that is quite a nice link into that this book is obviously written also by two authors and this book looks at uh, two different princesses and we get two different points of view and the two princesses are, have um, different characteristics. We've got kind of more of a cynical one, we've got kind of more of a sunshine one, so a bit of like a grumpy sunshine going on there. Um, and so those different kind of points, I don't know more about it because I don't want to, but I, I you, the kind of that flip side and then that kind of intrigue. So um, I think it's a courtly drama, like a political courtly drama. Um, it's a YA fantasy, 
Um, so yes, I, I feel this could be an option that I think would fit the Gemini Zodiac recommendation well. The other one I have um, is the second part of a duology. So you could also read the first one for this. Um, so this is a historical fiction, but with an element of fantasy in it. Um, and this is, what's the duology called? It doesn't tell me. But the first book is called She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. And I would read the second book, He Who Drowned the World. So within this, again, you've got a character that is adapting themselves to different situations. She um, chooses her destiny and decides to disguise herself as a boy and take on her brother's um, destiny. And she starts mm -hmm. off by becoming a monk um, and adapts to that situation and then other stuff happens and then she adapts to that situation and is slowly kind of changing her character as she goes along uh, and eventually this kind of leads to um like a there's a war conflict going on um and our protagonist finds um themselves on sort of one side of it um and then we also see from the other side as well and it's really fascinating sort of seeing some different perspectives in here. And um, yeah, so there's just that kind of flip side about different things. And I feel that when we get to this book, there is another character we kind of met more at the end of She Who Became the Sun, who I feel is going to be a very kind of strong influence and probably the antagonist um, in here. So there's de I think it's definitely going to be two different points coming through in this. And I'm very excited to see where it goes. But yes, that adaptability, that lots to talk about. I really love the detail in this. Um, it brings me a lot of joy. Um, and I really connected uh, to the protagonist in this one and also another character whose name eludes me. Um, but they're very like academic and scribey. And um, it was sort of like power to the scribes and not just the warriors um but yeah i'm gonna have to refresh myself <laughs> slightly on all the names in here but yeah this would also be another option for zodiac so these are my two options oh and amazingly they both have dark blue covers with like gold detailing on which is quite interesting oh and um he who drowned the world is an adult adult fantasy is what it's classed at it might be more fantastical than the first but i would more say um, historical fiction, um, sort of like Chinese history um, with um, a fantastical element to it. Okay, so that's two possibilities for um, astronomy. Also, there were no uh, middle grade kind of options for this, so I might do a um, recommended, recommend, recommending book for your zodiac sign middle grade edition, because you know I can't resist anything to do with middle grade. So then we move on to psionics and divination. Um, so this is the final class for Star Whisperer. And we are looking at Clairsentience 2. Um, and the, for this one, it is Prediction Bingo. So this is where you choose any book and you make a bingo board. It could be 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, however many you want to do. And before you read the book, obviously having a, having a book you don't know much about makes the most sense for this and you predict certain things you think will happen and then obviously when they do you tick them off and then you see if you can get a bingo which I think sounds so much fun um, and what I'm going to use for this is I would like to try and use the group book for this one and at this point of filming we don't know what that is so within the readathon your character can join a guild there are four different guilds i am of the guild of mind walkers um so all the mind walkers put forward a book they're going to recommend recommend a book um g collects all of their suggestions together puts them in a wheel and randomly chooses four titles and then all of the mind walkers vote on one of those four books and whichever one gets the most books that is going to be the group book for the mind walkers so I really hope, one, it's something I want to read, and two, it's something that's easy for me to get hold of. <laughs> so we will see what it is, but I don't know at the moment, so that's why it's quite easy for me to leave that space for that one. 
And um, if you're interested, the book I suggested was Frontier by Grace Curtis because I really want to read it. It's a sci-fi, um, it's fairly recent but not too recent, so I thought it should be kind of okay for people to get hold of and it's quite slim. I think it's only like, it's between like around 300 pages, not even that. It is, because the glossary is on 246, so it's coming. <laughs> It's, yeah, 235 pages. So that's quite a nice one. Um, and I love the tagline. I love loss and laser guns. So that's that was my suggestion. Whether or not it will come through, because there will be so many suggestions, we will find out. So there we go. So that's my Star Whisperers. So currently we have um, one of the... I'm just going to hold up random books. So we have whatever we think inscription might be. We have whatever book we're, is going to win for Frontier. Then we have Game Changer. And then it's probably going to be because I want to... In fact, it is. So Twin Crowns, nice, but not this time. Um, my Zodiac recommendation book is going to be He Who Drowned the World because um, Shelley Parker Chang is non-binary. So I want to read this for as my um, genre fiction for Trans Girl April and for my non-binary author of Trans Girl April, so that will work really well. And um, I will be, by completing this, I'm finishing off a duology, and I know I really want to get my series, and I have been eyeing this up all out last year, and it's finally time for me to pick it up and continue. So there we go, so there's my um, Star Whisperer choices. Okay, so we're moving now on to my Scribe TBR. And so for that, um, I've already mentioned the description, we're leaving it to the end and law already dealt with. So we are looking at Restoration. This is a book um, we're going to be studying, Regaining Consciousness. And so for this, it is a book you think could cure reading slumps. So I thought I'd have a nice little chat about books I think could cure reading slumps. So for me, good reading slump cures, I think, are rereads of books you love. Like those cosy books you can just pick up whenever and you just don't need to be thinking about it too much. You know you enjoy the book and you can just enjoy getting back with those characters again and having a lovely time. Um, so for my personal rereads, um, there are several books I could go for. One I'm kind of feeling at the moment and I really am hoping we get more spring lake weather because if we don't get spring light weather, I'm not going to want to pick it up. And that is Emma by Jane Austen. This is one of the books that I mentioned in my New Year Freakout tag that I want to read this year. I have not read from this copy. I have not reread Emma for a long time. I've not reread a Jane Austen for a long time. So I really want to. So I feel it's Emma's time. And at the moment, the sun is shining and it is looking spring like. And I really feel that I could just pick up Emma and have a wonderful time. But like I said, I need the spring. <laughs> I don't know why, but Emma, for me, I need to read it in springtime. There it is. So Emma's a possibility. Another possibility, um, another book I want to reread is the Terry Pratchett book. So I would be picking up possibly Raising Steam um, because this is the third book in the Moist von Lipprig trilogy. Um, it's a Discworld novel of the many, um, many, many ones out there. I read Making Money last year, so it would be nice to kind of like read this one, which is the third one, and I've only read this once, so it'd be nice to read it again. So, oh, and one more, one more possible reread. Um, I have got Gender by um, Meg John Barker and Jules Scheel. Um, so this is a graphic novel, uh, non-fiction about gender. I have read this before, but I would be very much up for reading it again to kind of consolidate all of my knowledge. And this would work really well again for Trans Girl April. Also, another thing I think for curing reading slumps is reading, um, reading a completely different book. So if you have been reading like a lot of kind of quite heavy historical fiction um, and you just need a bit of a break, you might find going to like a nonfiction because it's a completely different thing. Um, especially this one, because it's we've got a lot of kind of graphic content within here and like short easy kind of digestible bits of writing I mean the topic is quite in depth 
which is why I definitely want to reread it because I have read a lot more stuff around gender since then so I think I'd be able to get more out of it this time round um but it's just a completely different format saying that also like if you've been reading a lot of epic fantasy maybe picking up something like a mystery would kind of get you out of a reading slump or you know if you've been listening to a lot of audiobooks maybe looking at a graphic novel and um, just kind of mixing it up I think is a good way of getting out of reading slumps uh, another good recommendation for getting out of reading slumps is reading something that's kind of a bit shorter and a bit easier to finish I think as like a palate cleanser I really enjoyed that word um, so I have suggestions of lots of different palette cleansers. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is um, a novel in verse. I love novels in verse. I think you it just kind of makes the, the certain thing I think it gives more of an impact to because of that format. And also they flow really well and they're really easy to kind of like get through and read. One of my favourites is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atter. Um, so this is a story of identity um, he is half, um, is it Greeks? I think it's, I think it's Greek Cypriot, half Greek, um, he has Greek Cypriot heritage and then he has also got Black Jamaican heritage, um, he is also gay and it is kind of like him kind of like pulling all those parts of his identity kind of together and kind of finding himself and it is just, it's just beautiful, it's so well done, I love also the format of this book, um, where you have got, um, uh, there's some illustrations, no one asked you to fall down there. Um, there's certain bits that are on black paper and the things on black paper I definitely feel are ones where um, you need to remember them. Like you, it's quite of a strong point being made. And also you've got lots of shapes as well. So this is obviously done in the shape of a heart, this piece of writing with two flamingos either side. And it's just gorgeous. Also, I love my copy with, it's got the pink feathers um as the end pages and then on the front we have got a gold foil flamingo one of my favorites i just love it um another option are novellas um so i've got um a few novellas here um fantasy novella brandon sanderson's um the emperor's soul this book is just so well put together it is so concise which you don't usually accept, expect from Sanderson there's usually lots of different things but the world building is very much kind of focused on um this one character but I just love how there's certain points of the story that then kind of come back later in and it's just really beautifully kind of put together um I find it really really engaging um for book lovers everywhere, this is a book that I feel everyone could definitely read. And this is The Cat Who Saved Books by Suzu Suzuke Natsukawa. And this is a story about a boy who loses his granddad. His granddad worked in the bookshop where the boy spent most of his time. And it's about how he continues with his life afterwards. Um, how he his love of books and his sharing of love of books helps him to kind of like come out of his shell and kind of make connections with people. And it's just beautiful and it's set like a fairy tale you've got three different moments in this book where the cat comes to the boy so it has got um, a sort of a fantastical element to it as well but it's just so beautiful and i just think book lovers will love it and finally i recommend um this is the second book but i recommend a psalm for the wild built by becky chambers this is a sci-fi but it is all about well-being and it is just again really beautifully done it involves tea it involves a tea monk it involves a robot and it's just very healing and soothing <coughs> more tips speaking of tea i need to drink some so i think it's a perfect book for curing reading slumps because you just feel very nurtured and it doesn't take long to read and finally for my recommendations this I feel is a very well known one if you haven't read it yet or haven't heard of it where have you been Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry this is a cosy fantasy this involves coffee <laughs> an orc opening a coffee shop um given up being a mercenary and just wants a nice simple trade it's got loads of good vibes um a slight plot but it is mainly about the vibes and about the business and you just kind of want to hang out with these characters and drink coffee with them 
if that's not for you if you need a plot this isn't for you this is cozy feels so if i decide not to go with a reread i have got other options for myself um i have got blood water paint by um joy Muckalo. Joy Muckalo, I think is how I pronounce that name. Apologies if I have just completely butchered it. This is a novel in verse um, and it is about um, the daughter of a painter and um, I, I think it's got very feminist themes and I don't know any more than that but I heard Olivia from um, Olivia's Catastrophe raving about this one and I'm very excited. I'm very excited for this. Uh, my other options are a middle grade because middle grades always give me joy so they're always going to pull me out of a slump and one I'm really excited about is Arcspire by Jamie Littler because I adore Jamie Littler's Frostheart series and I have yet to read the first book in a new series and I'm very excited for it. I'm so excited about this world and the characters. If Frostheart is anything to go by this is going to be another fave for me. Finally, something a bit different. Um, I have a cosy non-fiction. So this is a book recommended to me by my mum. And I was going to borrow her copy. But I recently went to the library where they're having a book sale. And found a nice hardback. Um, so this is, um, the, this is called Bookworm. A memoir of childhood reading by Lucy Mangan. So it is, I think, just like an enjoyment of reading and just kind of someone writing down all their memories and joys of reading. There were some moments that my mum when she was reading this was sharing certain bits with me and it just sounded so warm and cozy and again I think another must read for book lovers. So currently I have no idea which one of these I'm going to choose for my <laughs> cure reading slumps so I'm going to leave it for now and see if I come to a decision a bit later on or I might leave it up in the air and maybe my um when I do my TBR game book worms and book ladders for April, that might help with some of these decisions. Okay, so the next one we have for Scribe is um, spells and incantations. <laughs> so for this one, it's the spell quick count. So we are going to do a random num number generator for title length. So I have chosen between seven and 21 because it's a book I want to read that's got seven letters in the title um, and a book that I want to read that's got 21 letters and I have managed to work out books I want to read with pretty much all of the letter combos apart from two. So because I can't do a random number generator because I use my phone for filming I've written all the numbers down here um, and I'm just going to pick one. So I don't know what they are. I'm shuffling them in this tin lid. And now I'm just going to pick one. Um, so for an example, um, I'm not using this book, but Frontier has got F-R-O-N-T-I-E-R, -E eight letters in the title. So if I picked out eight, I could read Frontier. Okay, I'm going for... So give them a good scrunch and I'm just going going right in the middle and I've grabbed this one let's see what it is it is number 10 so I have an option on here <laughs> but I'm just gonna have a look through and see what if I can find any other books that have got 10 letters in the title and no, I don't. So I haven't got any options to show you. I've just got the one. So this one is going to be my reread. So I think my reading slump book is not going to be a reread because I think I just want to do one reread because I've got a lot of books, new books that I also want to read. So the reread is a Pratchett book and I have got Feet of Clay. So four in feet, two in of, so that's six in clay so that's 10. Feet of Clay is the third book in the Watch series, first book being Guards Guards. I have read, this is not actually my copy, this is mum's, <laughs> but she's got like four other copies of Feet of Clay so I just took this one and she doesn't really like this one anyway, it's one of the old mass market paperbacks. I know like there are a lot of diehard Pratchett fans who love these old covers. 
I don't. <laughs> I am much more a fan of the Paul Kidby artwork than the Josh Kirby artwork. Very similar names. But for me, Paul Kidby's artwork sings of the characters and this is kind of what they look like. Josh Kirby has got a very distinct style and it's not for me. But um, I love this, the Watch series. I haven't reread the Watch books for a long time. I have read Guards Guards and Men at Arms a lot <laughs> because those are the only two I had when I went to uni. Um, I had some other projects as well, but those are the only Watch ones I had. And I just was a massive, massive rereader and barely got any new books. Um, but I would like to kind of like continue reading, rereading all of the Watch books again. So Feet of Clay would be the next one that I would read. So I'm going to reread Feet of Clay and it's going to be fun. There we go. I've got one book set in stone. <laughs> and then we have um, Elemental Studies. So this one is Call Lightning and it is to read a book with a source of light on the cover. So books with source of light on the cover. I have a few. I have a few. So... I've got some middle grade. I have got Sisters of the Lost Marsh by Lucy Strange. And we have got a moon here. So you can see by the light of the moon. And on the back, we've got a lamp. Um, so this book is, um, I think it's like, is it historical fiction? With like a spooky vibe with kind of a mystery aspect to it. Um, I think so. Doesn't completely shut. That's that's what I get from it. Or oh, something on the back. Um, also, there's a curse and a vanished sister and a will of the wisp. So it's giving me lots of spooky vibes. It's giving me um, some fun family vibes. I'm very excited. The cover is beautiful. We've got three sisters down the bottom here. We've got some sort of like tents at the top and like this gold tree branches and this isolating marsh. And then on the back, we've got um, a lamp, more tree branches. And we've got these kind of like pink, gold and kind of like pale green colours going throughout and then darker green colours. And it's got French flaps. We've got a horse here and then lots of lanterns. So again, we are definitely doing the source of light. And there's Lucy Strange and more lanterns in the back. So this is a beautiful copy. Deleted. So that's one option. Another option is another middle grade and it is Wilder Than Midnight and we've got a lit window in the tower here and we've got lots of little stars all around it. This is by Kerry Burnell and it is sort of like fairy tale fantasy. We have got three um, female protagonists in here. I'm very excited and I've heard great things from both my mum and also from Daniel Silverscribe about this book. Um, other books with a source of light on the cover um, are The Conductors and The Undertakers. The Conductors I read and loved last year. It's got a lantern on the front. The Undertakers, who I really, really want to read, has got a magical kind of glowing light coming from the hand and there's lots of stars around because they lose a lot of star magic in here. This is historical fiction, fantasy, mystery. <laughs> it is... Um, set after what year is it set in like eight is it 17 or 18 i think it was like it was early 18 they usually give you like a time period at the beginning of the book 1871 is that one but i don't know if that's like a flashback or anything no it says 1871 just checking just checking in here <laughs> That was 1858. Yeah, cool. 18, set in 1871 in America, in Philadelphia, I think. Um, and it follows two protagonists who were part of the Underground Railroad. Um, but since slavery has been abolished, they're not doing that anymore. Um, but it's all about these kind of black communities that because of like families being broken apart and things by slavery and things like that. Um, they start making their own family units and communities so it's kind of set very much in that era and I love the characters and I really enjoy the Cold Glover's writing and I'm very very excited to continue. So that's an option. 
Um, we have The Boy Who Fell From The Sky by Benjamin Dean, another middle grade. And um, we've got this amazing comet here as a source of light. Um, Benjamin Dean is most well known for Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow. So this is not contemporary, this is sci-fi. It involves an alien falling to Earth and a friendship between him and an Earthling boy. So I've got this out of the library. I'm excited to read this one. And I think that is probably it. Oh no, there could be a source of light here. Um, Secrets of the Stars. We Yes, so we've got Secrets of the Stars. Again, a second book. Um, this is by Maria Kuznia. Um, the first book is A Ship of Shadows. And we've got lots of starlight all over this. The cover is absolutely beautiful. I love this cover. So that's another option. So I've got five options there. <sighs> Getting lots of options for Scribe. Other possibilities I had that I may shelve now, I don't know. Um, so in terms of like continuing series, I wanted to continue with the Scythe series and read the Toll. It would be lovely to finish out this series. But it's quite a big book and I've got quite a lot to read. So I might hold off on that. Um, I'm borrowing Us Against You um, from my friend Dave. Different friend Dave to the other Dave I speak about. Several Daves. Um, but we were talking about Frederick Buckman and I was saying how much I love Bear Town. And he said that he had the next book. So I'm like, could I please borrow? So he has lent me Us Against You, which is the second book. Um, it's about an ice hockey team. There is a very small community in Sweden because I always feel it's Norway, but it's not, it's Sweden. Um, and it's how about this kind of like small town, how it revolves around hockey and how its world was kind of rocked when an incident happened and how the town kind of divided themselves on it. So we pick up the story kind of where it left off in this one, I believe. And we've kind of got a bit of a hockey rivalry going on, but it's not just that it's about the characters it's about certain social issues in here and it's about this community but i feel i might not get to these i'm feeling possibly other books um so two other books that i do really want to read this month is um one is a buddy read and that is pages and co tilly and the book wanderer by anna james the first book in the um pages and co series I hope to, um, I've sort of like slunk my way into a buddy read that um, Kelly from Kelly Reads A Lot and Talia from Bandana Book Mom are doing. They mentioned about reading this and I still hadn't read it. So I was like, can I join in too, please? Um, so I'm hoping to read this with them. I've had the poses for a long time and have never picked it up yet, but I really want to and I do feel it's going to be a really good book for me. This could actually work for a book that I think would cure a reading slump because one it's a middle grade and it's about books so that gives me the cozy vibe straight away um and as you can see i've got two great characters from classic literature in here we've got alice in wonderland and we've got anne from anne of green gables um and i think tilly can go like into the books and the characters also come out of the books so i love all of that stuff so i definitely feel this would be a reading slump cure book for me so i might pop that in there I then have a non-fiction I really want to read as part of Trans Girl April. I want to read They, She, He by um, Shyla Baylor. It is part memoir, part kind of um, study. And it's um, called How We Talk About Gender and Why It Matters. So I'm very, very keen to give this a read as well and get this on my TBR. Um, other possibilities I have... Um, more uh, books for um, transgender, not transgender, trans girl April. Um, I have Pet by Koike Meze. I have I'm Afraid of Men by um, Vivek Shira. I have um, Uncomfortable Labels by Laura Kate Dale. And I have Beyond Magenta, um, which is transgender teens speak out. So it's six different um, transgender teens. And this is probably what I'm going to read for my next banned book because this has been banned. Um, but I might save this for May because I want to kind of put a lot more time and thought into this particular one. So we will see. Right. So I think I've pretty much decided that this is going to be my comfort um, reading slump cure book. So this is my number generator, my reading slump, slump, 
<laughs> reading what's it called reading I need to stop saying reading reading cure reading slump cure so restoration i've got pages in kyo um tilly the book wanderers to cure reading slumps um quick count i've got um feet of clay have i got number 10 and that's feet of clay i've got 10 in the title then I need to choose a book for light on the cover and then I need to choose a book for inscription. So let me have a little think. Okay, because I've got lots of different options for light on the cover, um, I am going to, and I haven't got a lot of middle grade on my TBI yet, I am going to say that one of these three, um, Sisters of the Lost March, Secret of the Stars, or Wild Within Midnight will be my choice for light on the cover and then for picking a book writing three titles down so i don't feel i need to completely decide which one i'm going for at the moment because i might use my tbr game to help with that um but for my trans pick um i'm gonna put day she he um uncomfortable labels and um men are afraid of me um in my oh, brain <laughs> in my inscription so i'm going to do a non-fiction for inscription and i'm going to write those down and pull one out here we go all three titles just folding them up let's put them into this tin one you. and I'm not finished yet because I forgot I wanted to tell you about the possible book three that I will also have if I do my scribe of Star Whisperer then that might mean I get to also read a book for alchemy as well because Piolas would just like to continue on with that subject just for a little bit of fun so I picked that too let's do it again okay one in goes the claw what has the claw got Claw has got I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek um, Shera. So there we go. That is my pick for inscription. This is a very short, tiny little book. Um, so it's going to be very easy to read. And I've heard really good things about it. Yeah, it's 85 pages. So if you're looking for a short book, anyone, this one. Okay, there we go. So we have... Um, prescribe one of these three middle grades for light on the cover and then we've got I'm Afraid of Men, Feet of Clay and Pages and Co. So there we go, that is my inscription and um, not my inscription, that's my scribe and then my Star Whisperer We've got these with now the added I'm Afraid of Men on top for inscription and then whatever the group read is. So there we go. Those are what I'm going to be focusing on. But let me share my alchemy book. So for alchemy, we have um, Transmutation Circles and it is to read a book with a circle on the cover. And for that, I have decided to go for another book that I really, really want to read and haven't got around to yet which is one of the Brandon Sanderson secret projects. It's secret project number two, and it is the Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England. And there are a lot of these circle shapes on the cover, kind of shooting down in this sort of laser, laser behind this silhouette figure of uh, some sort of wizardy character. So if I get through all of that, I will also be reading this. There we go. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. It has taken a long time, as always. Um, I hope you found this enjoyable. Please let me know what you are going to be studying if you are doing the Magical Readathon. Um, if you are not doing the Magical Readathon but are doing any other readathons and want to talk about those, or if you have any thoughts on any of the books I've mentioned, I would love to hear about it because you know I love a chat. Now, if you have got to the end of this video, because it is very long, um, please leave some sort of star emoji for the Star Whisperer. Thank you and happy reading.